Dear family, good morning. I come to you with peace and love this morning. We are reminded early today that the second coming of Christ is near. And this morning, I want us to be reminded and encouraged about an important part or an important character or a fruit of the Spirit that must be present in our life. This morning, I would like for us to speak about peace. I think it's so important today, especially when the world is trying to tell us that it's going to bring peace. It's going to solve our problems. It's going to correct our government. But really, will it do that? Let's open up to John chapter 14, verse 27. It will be our key verse this morning. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and not be afraid. Peace is something that everyone wants today, but they seem like they can't, it seems like they can't find it. What is peace? According to the world, peace is a stress-free state of security and calmness that comes with no war, no fighting. Everything will coexist together in harmony and in freedom. And people are everywhere searching for this kind of peace. They write songs, they sing music, and they take long journeys to travel to different parts of the world to find it. And ironic, they even will start war to keep peace. The peace offered by the world brings temporary comfort. As fast as it comes, it flees even faster. And circumstances can change it quickly. During times of prosperity, nations experience a temporary peace. But when economies struggle to survive, when countries find themselves in trouble, all of a sudden they're on the brink of civil war and war with their neighbors even. When asked what's wrong with the world today, many will point to the stock market or they will say that it's the corrupt government that we live in or maybe it's the disappearing rainforest or the poor diet, lack of health care, broken families or maybe overcrowded schools or lack of schools. And the world tries to fix these problems by doing good. It tries to feed the kids. It builds wells for water to be everywhere. It tries to regulate everything that we do and it tells us this is important for your safety. It tries to conserve the wildlife. It signs peace deals and agreements between countries to be quickly broken. And what we see is that the world's peace tries to fix the symptoms of sin, but fails to see how the root of the problem is the sin, the sin disease itself. Something that can only be healed by Christ, not by money, regulations, or even reform. In contrast to the world's promise of peace, God's peace is permanent and firm, grounded in his word. He doesn't ignore our sin, he heals it, making his peace a different kind of peace where we cannot find in the world. God's peace is a gift that resides in Jesus and comes to us through the Holy Spirit as we learn to trust the Father as Jesus did. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33, the first part of it reminds us, it says, For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. Dear friend, are you living in the spirit of confusion today? We know that chaos and confusion is the work of the enemy. 
And Satan likes to keep your environment, your mind, your emotions, and your life filled with chaos. He's the enemy of God and the Lord's people, and he doesn't want you to have peace. So he will use what, whatever means necessary to rob you of that peace. Whether it comes in from anxiety or worry or stress, maybe a personal attack, a workplace drama, money issues, health problems, or family conflicts, Satan will stroke those flames of conflict internally and externally to consume you. And while your mind will be focused on the drama and the issue around you, there will be no place for peace in your life. Isaiah says it really well in Isaiah 26 verse 3. He says, you will keep in perfect peace. He, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. All those thoughts are fixed on you. Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is eternal rock. As a believer, you and I have an obligation to let the peace of God rule in our hearts. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15 says it really well. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. This means that we have a choice either to trust God's promise and let his peace rule in us or to rely on ourselves and reject the peace he offers. Dear friends, what do you choose today in this confused and lost world? Is there peace in your heart? Or are you confused and lost? Paul puts it so well in Romans 8, chapter, chapter 8, verse 6. For to set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. True peace today can only be found in Christ. Not in the peace that the world offers. As we are about to pray, I want to ask you and myself one question. Where is your source of peace comes from today? John chapter 14 verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and not be afraid. Dear friend, if your peace is in the world, your heart will be in trouble. You will live in fear. But if it is in Christ, he promises to you that his peace is no like, not like this world's peace. Let us give thanks and glory to him this morning for the peace that only he can offer to us. Amen.